Welcome back to another episode of Marriage Mondays, um, episode number five. Yep. Episode number five. Um, we're so blessed and thankful to be able to do these, and we hope you all enjoy them, and we just grow together as a community. Um, that's our, our prayer mm-hmm. and our hope that we just grow together in a, as a community, um, regardless of if you have a great, thriving marriage or, yeah, maybe you're in a hurting marriage or, yeah, your spouse isn't um, being the person that God has called them to be or whatever it might be. And um, today, today we're going to talk about um, being in an unequally yoked marriage and um, kind of how, how that looks like and, yeah, what, what you can do if, yeah, it goes more than just your spouse not being an unbeliever. And so maybe your spouse goes to church and whatever and professes to be a Christian, but maybe he still isn't um, he, he or her. Usually it's kind of more the husbands that tend to, yeah, not maybe yeah not step up to the call that god has for them being the spiritual leader of the home or what in different areas they just don't take christianity as seri- as seriously for me i used to think as long as i took my family to church that's all that mattered but it's way more than that yeah and so yeah we just want to look at some bible verses and different things and hope this can be an encouragement and so yeah um if you also, if you think of someone else that maybe um, you feel could be blessed by this, um, feel free to share them. Please share this, uh, yeah, f- share this video with a friend and also yeah. stay till the end. We're going to pray over marriages. We're going to pray over your um, spouse, whether your spouse is saved or not, um, whether, yeah, they're maybe they're just not living out the uh, calling that God has for them. And we're, So we're going to pray and we believe that, yeah, God is going to heal. He's going to restore marriages. He's going to mm-hmm. restore families um, because if, he, if he's done it in my life, I know that he can do it in, in yes. other people's Amen. lives too. And so that's just what what we want this video to be. That's our prayer and our, yeah, we know that God can do it. He, he's done it before and he can do it again. And so, yeah, please stay till the end. We're going to pray over marriages and it's just going to be a great time. Yeah. So um, before we do that, um, last week's video, if you didn't watch that, um, yeah, I encourage you to go back and watch all of our videos um, episode by episode. And it just, at, at the end of each one, we have a challenge for you to apply. And um, But last week, we gave you 10 practical um, ways that you can spice up your sexual intimacy in your marriage. And we just had challenged you to try something new and just to make it an effort to apply those things. So, um, yeah, we would love to hear if you, if you did any of those. Um, we would love to hear in the comments how it went, um, how it, you know, maybe helped your marriage or maybe, yeah, just we would love to hear from you on that. So, Awesome, awesome. Yeah, and this video today, we kind of, we this is for everyone, whether you're married or you're in a uh, dating relationship or you're single, like we want to look at it, yeah, if, whether, regardless your, uh, yeah, your status quo, whether you're dating, married or single, but. Um, I actually wish I would have known this stuff when I was yeah, single and yeah. even when we were dating. It yeah, it could have it could have um, saved us from a lot of yeah. heartbreak, a lot of heartbreak that we went on went through earlier on in our marriage. And so, yeah. yeah, this can yeah, we just hope this can bless anyone, regardless. Yeah, whether you're married or not. But um, as far as if you're single, um, you're looking for a spouse. Like, yeah, the the most important thing is to look for a spouse who um, yeah loves God, honors God, mm-hmm. and yeah. Um, but also in praying for a partner or whatever, don't be don't be a, uh, praying for a partner way up here when like you're praying for a partner that uh, reads their Bible every day and does yeah a lot of Christian things, but you're not even willing to do that. And so yeah. God God can be like, wait a minute, you're asking for a spouse way up here when you're not even doing the bare minimum. Only you're doing and that. The- can even be in your marriage, like if you're. If you're just focused on what your spouse is doing wrong and how you wish they would improve, but you're not doing the things that you want them to do, then it needs to start with with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like that's where it needs to start. Um, Because, yeah, it's easy to just shift the focus or shift the blame blame on our spouse when we have a part in it too. Yeah, so we want want to be growing in our own spiritual walk with God. Like we want to be growing – and yeah, and also yeah, pray for a partner who loves God. But also, don't don't come at like don't think the uh, there's no one good enough for me. Like don't think that <laughs> oh I, this will never work. There you know whatever we're always gonna have issues or whatever. There's no one perfect. 
Yeah. And yeah, don't come, don't look at merit or anything with the attitude that no one's good enough for me because, um, like, yeah, just look over your own life, I guess, and evaluate. Yeah. And yeah, and two, when two people go, come together in a marriage covenant, it's two imperfect people loved by a perfect God. It's through His grace and love that um, it, it gets to work. That's how our marriage gets to work. I mean, it's through God. It's through His, yeah, love. It's not on yeah. our own, so... But we have to, we still have a part to do. Like, we yeah. still have to seek the Lord. And so, yeah, through that, you know, that what, that's what keeps it going. So mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that everything's perfect, but, you know, it, 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 we're just so blessed to, um, that, yeah, we have a partner. Both of us can say we have a partner that seeks yeah. God. So that's, yeah, that's a blessing. So um, another uh, area, so if you are in a dating relationship and maybe your uh, partner um, isn't it a believer? Maybe he goes to church, but that like he doesn't talk about God or yeah, he um, he isn't seeking the Lord. He isn't active actively seeking the Lord and stuff. Um, yeah, what like maybe you're wondering what you should do about that. Um, in Second Corinthians six fourteen, it says, "Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what does what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Bela?" Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are temple of the living God. As God has said, I will walk with them. I will live with them and walk along them. And I will be their God and they will be my people. And so, yeah, it's just Paul is warning us not to be yoked together with uh, unbelievers. And like when we think of a yoke, like it's for oxen, like two and and so if you're not equally yoked it's very hard to work work together and yeah. so so yeah paul is just warning you before before you get into a marriage covenant where two people become one and this it is for god's will for the rest of their life and so before you do that and i would just yeah strongly encourage you to make sure that you are on the same page with your faith and your walk in christ like yeah, yeah. it's um and that's yeah, that's just a, a warning. Like, don't be unyoked. Don't be, uh, don't be yoked together with unbelievers. Like, yeah. It's and just, if you if you think that you can change them once you're married, um, that's a very dangerous place to be, and it can bring a lot of hurt if you have that mindset. Yeah, don't um, al don't allow emotion or passion to bind you with someone who will not be your spiritual partner. Um, yeah, that's. Yeah. Um. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe you're married. Um. Maybe in your marriage, and yeah, like we were talking, it's a unequally yoked marriage. Maybe you, your spouse was a believer, or and for some reason, maybe he fell by the wayside. Maybe your spouse isn't uh, fulfilling the call that God has on their life. Maybe they're just fell by the wayside, and they're no longer. Um. And maybe they're even going to church, but they're no longer seeking the Lord. They're no longer trying to fill fulfill the um His calling in their life for whatever reason, and so. An unequally yoked, like, yeah, it's more than just an unbeliever. Like, it's, yeah, if your spouse is here with their uh, walk and with their faith in God, but you're back here, like, it's it's unequally yoked. Yeah. And and there was a time in our marriage when uh, we yeah. weren't equally yoked. And yeah. Yeah. There was even, like, like, there was a period of time when I was, like, he was doing things that um, I didn't like. But at the same time, like, I was not personally, like, for a long time, I was so focused on what he was not doing right. But at the same time, I was not doing my part. I was not seeking the Lord. I didn't have that personal relationship with God. I was just so focused on, like, trying to correct you. And so it got to the point where I had to... um like, I had to let go. I had to, to surrender him to God. I had to stop trying to change him and instead put my focus on my relationship with God. Not that I just completely ignored him or like just, but I stopped trying to, to get him to change. And I was like, God, I'm giving him to you. I'm letting you work in his life. And in the meantime, I started seeking a personal relationship with God and, you know, just yeah, prioritizing that. And through that, like when I, it wasn't until I did that and just let go of that control of trying to get him to change that God started working in his life. 
and he started to make those changes on his own. Yeah, and I think that's why it's so important that we share our stories as well, because for someone who might be watching that, that just sees our videos on YouTube, they might think, oh, they have a perfect marriage or whatever. They're just showing the, the highlight of their marriage or whatever. But we have to share our story so other people can uh, relate with, yeah, relate with us as well. Yeah, and see, you know, we've also we've also had our struggles. And, and yeah, I was not the, uh, the man that God had called me to be for a very long time. And so, yeah, um, and that's why at the end of this, we want to pray for all for all the spouses, because if God did it for me, he can do it for your spouse Amen. as well. And so yeah. that's why, yeah, it's important that we share our life stories and we just we just want to grow together. We just want to go through through life together. And if God's done it for me, he'll, he can do it for anyone. We want our story to be able to, you know, encourage you to not give up and just like if if God can do it in our marriage, He can do it in yours. Amen. And it might not always be in the timing that we wish it was, but if we don't give up, we continue to just pray and seek God. Um, he will do it. Amen. I know He will. Amen. Good stuff. So uh, one of the things yeah I want to talk about is honoring your spouse. Honor your spouse. To honor someone is to show them courtesy and respect. Honor has very little to do with the person you're giving it to. It has more to do with the perfect person giving the honor. So when you talk about honoring your spouse, you might think, well, they don't deserve the honor. They're not. Mm -hmm. But honor has more to do with your heart. And and when God wants us to honor our spouse, because when we do that, we we all of a sudden we have this love for them and we're able to see them the way that God does. Because uh -huh. regardless how your spouse is today, if he's, yeah, not, maybe not um, being a Christian, maybe not walking out the life that God has from God still loves him. God still loves your spouse. Mm -hmm. And so we have to realize, yeah, God still loves them just as much as the believer, as the unbeliever, mm -hmm. but he, he wants them to become a believer. And so in honoring our spouse, now it doesn't mean that we go along with every, with whatever, they're, if, if it goes against the Bible, it doesn't mean that we, it's honoring is just um, giving honor to them, like showing them respect and courtesy and, and things like that. And, and I feel uh, this even goes to the church. Like we're not on. I feel like in some churches there's no honor for the, for the pastor. There's no honor for elders and stuff. And that's. I mean, it it, it yeah. can go a long way more in any relationship, more than just your marriage. But if we would honor those in authority, if we would honor those above us. It doesn't mean that we simply agree with everything. Yeah, they do, like if they're living but, in sin, it doesn't mean that you have to be okay with that or agree with it. But you can still. You can still honor them without agreeing with it right, or going along with right. it. I think even like our president, um, we should honor our president. I mean, maybe we don't agree with um, how they stand on, on different areas, but we should still show them honor. And and people in authority, we should show them honor. Yeah. Um, even, yeah, we, it doesn't mean we have to go along with them, but yeah. Honor has to do with your heart. If you don't honor and hold... If you don't honor, but you hold offense, you're blocking your breakthrough. If you want breakthrough in your marriage, honor your spouse and serve God. Offense heartens our heart towards God. We can let offense harden our heart so bad that it's hard to come back to God. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if we just we don't honor our spouse and we just hold offenses, and it can be it can be hard. Like um, if yeah, our spouse has done bad things toward us, like it can be hard to let go of offense. But yeah, let's just. Let go of the offense and love them through the eyes of Jesus. And but we're also not saying if you are in a uh, marriage in a position where there's abuse, where there's yeah. physical abuse, or your children are in danger, or anything, please, like you, if there's, yeah, if yeah, you're, you're not in a situation like that, I would say you are not required to to stay with them. Amen. Like we're just Amen. talking about like if there, if there might be. If they might be walking in sin or they might not be walking in the calling that God has for them, like leading your family the way they're supposed to, like if it's the husband or, um, but if, yeah, in a situation like that, you can, um, and there's actually a Bible verse that talks about that, like not like by use, if the, if the unbeliever is, or the, the spouse that isn't living for God, if they are willing to stay with you, then you should stay with them. But I don't think that means like if there if there's abuse there. I don't think God wants you to stay in a marriage where you're being hurt, whether it's physically 
yeah, whatever. If if we're out on a hike and a, a bear comes along and starts eating you and the children, I'm not just going to sit there and there, hey, bear, please don't hurt, like, yeah. where there's going to be action. To, and I don't want to put a spouse to the same analogy as a bear or whatever, yeah. but in that same regard, like, God doesn't expect us to just to sit back. He doesn't expect us to stand in the middle of the road and yeah. not get hit, like, um there yeah if you are if there's physical abuse your children are abused in danger whatever your spouse is in drugs and puts the children in danger yeah i yeah i would definitely say seek help like don't yeah, yeah it's not definitely. yeah but yeah so one another thing about the honor that i had to think about um in the ten commandments about honor your father and mother and uh, um from the like the Amish like to kind of put that verse as you have obey. to obey. So going back to the honor thing, like, yes, we are. And it doesn't say honor your father and mother if they're good parents. It says honor your father and mother. Mm -hmm. And yes, I want to honor my father and mother because they are my parents. They did as good. I might not agree with everything they did, but they did as good as they knew how to in the culture that they grew up in. And so I want to honor them for that. It doesn't mean I go along with everything they say. But yeah, yeah. God, and God honor is, doesn't mean obey. That's right. And that's kind of where you the, respect them and you, yeah, you honor them. But it doesn't mean that you have to, especially once you're married, like if they want you to do a certain thing, like you can honor them without doing everything they want you to do. So, yeah, I guess, yeah, going back to the, yeah, kind of what the Amish from where we come from, the Amish, like, when you want to leave the Amish, they want to bring this up, honor your father and mother. Like, they they mm -hmm. think that says you got to obey them regardless. Like, you have to stay Amish because most parents, their wish is for their children to stay Amish. So you have to obey them. Like, they want to bring this up. But Jesus says, anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, both of these are in the Bible. Yeah. And so, yes, we're to honor our father and mother, but we're also... Our relationship with God is above anyone else, any person mm -hmm. on this earth. And so if we love our, our spouse more than God, like we're not supposed to hold anyone above Jesus. Like Jesus, he's number one. We're supposed to love and honor him. And if our spouse is leading us to the wayside, like, yeah, we're supposed to, our relationship with God is supposed to be first. Yeah. yeah. Don't hit your spouse over the head with the Bible. Like, don't just repent. Like, sometimes I feel like, yeah, it's, Christians go out and repent, repent, repent. And it's like, um, yeah, yeah, people of the world need to repent, but let's tell them the good news. Why should you repent? Like, yeah. you want to receive God's love. Like, don't just go around hitting people over the head with the Bible. Repent, repent. Like, come on. Like, yeah. Go to your spouse with the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. And like, that's all. Show, show those are all fruit. actions. Like, a lot of times your actions towards your spouse are going to speak way louder to them than your words ever will. That's a good point. Pray for your spouse and speak blessings over your spouse. And this is very important. Like Satan wants you to give up defeat. Like this marriage will never work. Your spouse will never change. And, and if he can't get you to think that your spouse will never change, he'll, he'll start just bringing you down like you'll never change you don't deserve a better marriage you're worthless you're horrible like he'll just do anything and don't let him do not let satan get um yes. get victory we god has god we're not fighting for victory god has he's victorious we're fighting from victory god is victorious satan is defeated he just tries to he just tries to um uh, get us yeah into into thinking that it'll, it will never work. But let's pray for our spouse and let's bless them, even if they aren't living the life that they're supposed to be. Like, let's bless them and and they God can bring them back. God can bring them back and, yeah, families can be reconciled. I had to think of the verse in Ephesians, uh, Ephesians 6, verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil spiritual forces in the heavens. So, like, so often if our spouse is living in sin or they're not living to what God has called to called them to, it can be easy to look at your spouse and just, like, see them as the bad person. But if you realize there's a spirit behind it, you're not fighting against your spouse. You're fighting against... The enemy against the spirit that is 
behind them. And so mm, once you see it that way, you can you can start loving your spouse without loving what they're doing. You can start um, fighting for them, like fighting against that spirit, that evil in prayer. And like, yeah, it, it just changes your your view of them once you see it in once you see them in that way and realize, you know, it's yeah, it's a spirit behind it. Yeah, it's the devil. Just it's the, the same way. Yeah. yeah, just the same way. If you're if you're living out the fruits of the spirit, there's also a spirit behind that. Like, and, and we have to realize, like, the only difference between if you're a believer and your spouse is an unbeliever, like you you receive God's love, and and maybe your your spouse hasn't seen that yet, and so mm -hmm. you just have to, yeah, be willing to to see them through the eyes that Jesus sees them, and yeah just love them and you know don't condemn them like um, yeah just yeah i mean yeah it can, if yeah God and i know it's hard but god god wants to help you if you if you lean on him for strength i wanted to read a couple of verses here in first corinthians uh first corinthians 7 we'll read uh verses 10 through 14. to the married i give this command not i but the lord a wife must not separate from her husband, but if she does, she must remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband, and a husband must not divorce his wife. To the rest I say, I, not the Lord, if any, if any brother has a wife who is not a believer and she is willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. And if a woman has a husband who is, a not, be, who is not a believer and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife, and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise, your children would not be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. Hmm. Awesome. And so the sanctified part there, you might think, well, does that mean if it says the, the spouse will be sanctified, does that mean they'll be saved through the uh, believing uh, spouse? But it's not, they're, they're not saved. It's just yeah. sanctified. Um, through and yeah, their whole house can be blessed through that. Like yeah, through through a one spouse being believer, like it can the whole like there can just be an atmosphere of peace and love, and that can come through the spouse that is safe, and yeah. the whole house can be blessed. And and I like I love the part where it says the um your children would be unclean, but as they are holy, and yeah, mm -hmm. like yeah, through through the believing spouse, like there can be fruit there. Yeah, that's awesome. Amen. In your relationship with Christ, do not neglect your responsibilities to your spouse that Jesus gets all the love and attention and completely deny your spouse and deny all the marital responsibilities and duties. And so in your relationship, don't just say, yeah, like think, um, oh, here, I need to get be in my Bible and, um, yeah, ignore everything else. Like you still have, yeah, your responsibilities and still like, uh honor and respect your spouse like if your um spouse comes home from work like have his favorite meal or whatever if there's something that he really enjoys like go out of the way to show respect yeah. and and that can yeah like god you still your walk with god is very important but don't let don't be like hey you don't love me god loves me or maybe the spouse still loves them but you don't love the lord god loves god, god loves me so he's going to get all the attention like don't like and God should come first, but then the fruits should flow from that too, to into how you treat your spouse and respect them and all of that. Another thing that I had to think of, like uh, for a husband, like um, maybe uh, after supper or whatever, like the children or um, the wife is being busy and you yeah, aren't helping around the house and you're like, Hey, you told me to read the, I'm supposed to read the Bible. So I'm going to hear it. I'm going to read the Bible. And it's like all these chores still need to be done. Well, no, first you help your spouse yeah. and then you can have family devotions or whatever. Yeah. You are supposed to read the Bible, but first you, you want to fulfill your duty um, to your spouse, like help your spouse. Like don't because in that you're also serving God. Amen. Because you're fulfilling. Yeah. The don't that God just has yeah. To. Don't say hey. I need I need to stay in the word. I can't do. I can't fulfill my response. You still have responsibilities. Like, yeah. And that's and that's more like if you're just doing this and you should be helping your spouse. Like God, I mean, I I feel that's kind of voiding out the yeah the, definitely the, the responsibilities. So I had um a couple verses in First Peter three. 
verses 1 and 2. In the same way, wives, submit yourselves to your own husband, so that even if some disobey the word, they may be won over without a word by the way their wives live, when they observe your pure, reverent lives. Like, if that's not black and white, I don't know what is. Um, and this is for, yeah, specifically if you're, if your husband, if he is, you know, living in sin or he's not living, he's not leading your family the way he should be. Um, like it says, submit yourself to your husband so that even if he's disobeying the word or he's in sin, like he may be won over without a word. And that, that is something that is hard for us as wives. Like we want to, um, we can tend to, you know, try to nag and um, point out, you know, all the ways they're failing and all of that. But it says without a word. And there again, like it goes back to our actions are going to speak louder to them than our words. Um, and I th yeah, I think that goes back. That, that's very good. Um, I think that also goes back to the honor part. Like you might, and it, and it can be hard. You might be thinking there's nothing there to submit to. There's nothing there to mm -hmm. honor, but it's all about our heart like that's so like all throughout the bible god looks at our heart what is our heart like the way yeah. that we view our spouse and the, the action what what is in our heart that's ultimately god knows our heart he knows what's in here uh -huh. the way we do every in every relationship in, in our in our marriage in every relationship that um everyone we get, um, meet and so yeah what is in our heart like that got, and it might be like you might you know, start submitting to your husband or like trying to love him the way that God loves him. And he might not accept it. Like he might still come at you with, you know, um, he might continue living the way he has been, or he might not, you know, notice it right away or even accept it. But, and, and through that, you might be like, well, it's not worth it. Like he's not, he's not even noticing or he's not even, you know, acknowledging what I'm doing or willing to, he's not even making changes. But that's where you have to continue to come back to God and just be like, God, give me the strength to, to not give up. Give me the strength to continue to submit to him, to continue to honor him, to respect him the way that you want me to. And in the same time, like ask God to just work in his heart, like, um, yeah, it, it can be really hard, Amen. but it can also, yeah, in God's time, he can, he might even be working in ways that you don't see right away. The, the things that we do for our spouse, like it, it doesn't go unnoticed um, by God. It, it doesn't Amen. go, it's not in vain. Like when we die, we will have treasures in heaven that we don't even, haven't even dreamed of. Mm -hmm. And it's, it comes through that area of when it's t hard, in a hard situation, like it, it can be very tough. And we don't want to ma make this sound like it's just all rainbows and sunshine. Uh, and sunshine. But yeah. God, if we honor God and we obey his commandments, even though, yeah, maybe our spouse doesn't um, deserve it. We think they don't deserve it. But yeah, God honors it. And he, he it will not be done in vain. I promise you, it will not be done in vain. Whether you your husband gets reconciled here on earth or not um yeah you'll you'll have treasures in heaven and so mm -hmm. yeah it's um yeah do not compromise your relationship with god to please your spouse if your spouse asks you to do certain things that go against god's word you shouldn't go along with it so yeah don't don't compromise your relationship with god if yeah your spouse is yeah asking you to do things that yeah you know isn't edifying isn't edifying to you isn't edifying yeah then don't don't go, um, yeah, you want to honor and respect, but don't, yeah. Yeah. Continue to grow in your own relationship with God. Do not let your spouse hinder your growth. On judgment day, God is going to hold you accountable to your own personal life. So, yeah, at the end of the day, like, God is going to hold it. We're all going to give account of our own life. Like, we can't mm -hmm. stand before God and give excuses like, um, my spouse did this did that well yeah we have to give an account for our own personal life and so that's why it's that's why god wants our relationship with him it has to be at the top mm -hmm. because at the end of the day at, on judgment day we're all going to face him and we can't give we can't 
give put the blame on anybody else. We so. have, yeah, we have to, yeah, we have to give an account for our own lives. And so, yeah, we we want to we want to take a Christian walk seriously. And so, yeah, God can, you know, God can do a work in each and every one of our lives. He did it for me. So, yeah. Just, yeah, just don't give up, even though it might be hard to, you know, you might be in the middle of it. It might be really hard. Um, just, yeah, continue, continue going back to God, because ultimately, like, we can't do it in our own strength. We can't live out the life that God has called us or even love our spouse it, spouse in our own strength we have to have god's help and so just continue going back to god um and yeah he will help you he will be there with you amen amen uh one more note that i wanted to read was we all deserve god's wrath but instead he offered us his unconditional love let us honor his sacrifice by treating our spouse the way god has treated us and so yeah we've all the bible says for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god but um he has given us a way out of that. He sent his son to die for our sins, and in him we can have everlasting life. And so let us show our spouse the love and compassion and that they can Amen. be won over. Just like, yeah, they can be won over. So yeah, we want to pray, we want to pray for your spouses. Um, and we don't just want to do it just because we think we should or whatever, but we want by faith, we want to do this in faith. By faith, we receive the promises of God. And so we believe if God did it in my life, he can do it in anyone. So that mm -hmm. is why, and yeah, you might be watching while well, you guys have a, it might look like through social media, like we have a perfect marriage, but no, we don't. We, we, all, we, have our struggles. we all have our struggles, but God did a work in, in my life. And so he can do it in anyone. And so we're going to pray. We're going to pray for, for your spouses, um, whether, yeah, whether they profess to be a Christian or not. And maybe they, yeah, they're just not calling uh, fulfilling the call that God has for them. They're not being a spiritual leader or whatever it may be. We're, yeah, we want to pray. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you for um, for the opportunity to um, to speak into all, all of these marriages, Lord. We just ask that you reconcile all these marriages, um, all the spouses who aren't fulfilling the call that you have for them, whether they have never known you or maybe they profess you as their Lord, but they, ju they just don't want to take it any serious. They have fallen by the wayside maybe, but Lord, we, we call them out. We call them out. We call them into uh, reconcil reconciliation, Lord, that spouses will re be reunited. Families will be reunited in Jesus. Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Lord, we see it. We see families being reunited, um, spouses, even those that say there never can be a way, Lord, you will bring them back together, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we thank you so much for the blood, the blood that was shed for all of our sins, Lord. And in that, we can find grace and love and show our spouse love and compassion. And they will see they will see that love and compassion. And it will drive them to your to your love for them, Lord. We thank you for never giving us never giving up on us, Lord. You've given us second chances. You've given us third chances. And and still when we come back to you, you receive us with open arms and you accept us. And Lord, we just ask that, yeah. You just be with each and every one who um, is in a in a hurting relationship, Lord, that you will heal the wounded in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen.